the freelancer job, which is deliberately saved for last, is probably doesn't appear remarkably useful at the start of the game. But at the same time, uh, your freelancer, on the other hand, is arguably one of the more powerful jobs in the entire game. And that's because of the fact that it can use any of the stat modifiers that your party party's master jobs for and then transfers over to your freelancer, making them arguably one of the more powerful, if not uh, best, uh, jobs to use for the final parts of the final part of the game. Not along with mine, of course. Hello, folks. This is the last guide for the uh, uh, Final Fantasy V jobs, jobs guide for beginners. And we're going to be covering the freelancer, the first uh, first job that players get ac accessibility to in the game. Now, of course, uh, freelancers are technically uh, not very powerful since they don't have any abilities to use other than to attack and use items. But as players master more jobs, gain more abilities, uh, the freelancer gets the ability to um, equip up about at least up to two abilities to use in combat. Now, they could be anything from being physical attackers to spellcasters. And, of course, the fact they can equip uh, any weapons and armor makes it uh, makes the equip uh, weapons and, and equip ribbons kind of rather pointless. Now, of course, I'm not positive if they can equip Dancer exclusive gear as well. Uh, if you do know, please let me know in the comments section uh, on YouTube. And basically, uh, freelancers can be just about anything the player puts their mind to. Now, of course, uh, each of the five playable party members have their own unique stats uh, that uh, they are either well-balanced or favored towards one specific stat as opposed to the others. Technically, uh, Barch would be your best physical attacker, Linda is your best mage, Galoof has the highest HP, meaning, making him more capable of surviving more combat more longer than the others. Ferris is probably your jack-of-all-trades slash well-balanced party member with uh, the second highest agility. And Kirli, who replaces Galoof later on, has the highest agility out of the entire party. So basically, uh, freelancers can be anything the player so wishes. And technically, uh, when it comes to jobs, freelancers need to be prepared and advanced. Because with all these jobs, you need to decide as to what you think will be well worth uh, doing. Master every job there is, or have them geared for specific roles. So here I had Bart's uh, master mostly uh, physical attacking since he does way better. And this is because of the fact he has a 28 strength modifier as a freelancer. So of course when you add the 26 uh, from uh, the monk, it transfers over to the um, freelancer. And when you combine that 28, he'll go up to about at least 54 on strength, I, I think. But technically, you can definitely uh, do this with just about any character. Technically, if you're looking to give them the best stats in the entire game for all party members, regardless of what role they go on, the general ideal is to give them Monk, Thief, and Summoner. This gives, with uh, Monk, you'll get 26, or... I think it's either 26 or 28 Strength modifier, if I remember correctly. Could be uh, one of the two, but if anyone knows, please let me know in the comments. Thief, of course, has 16 uh, agility, and of course, uh, Summoner has 33 uh, magic. So when you apply that all together, your party gets arguably the best uh, modifiers in the entire game. This also, uh, each character's modifier is affected by, uh, based on the modifiers. With strength, that affects your physical damage, so having uh, one of the jobs mastered will make your characters more stronger. Summoner, of course, governs your HP survivability so having higher stamina gives them more HP when they go back to being freelancers. Agility of course affects uh, pretty much your overall ATV meter and in some cases your ability to dodge attacks so mastering thief and having very high uh, agility is definitely well welcomed if you want to avoid attacks in general. Now of course uh, some part of, of course if you don't want them mastering the best uh, stat modifiers there's other options that you could consider, um, too. Uh, let's say if you don't want uh, Bart's to master Thief, uh, he can go with either Ninja 
or Mystic Knight, which gives him 14 instead. So having him master one of those jobs will get him the 14 agility stat. Now, if we don't want him mastering Summoner, we can always give him uh, another option for magic. And Geomancer having the cheapest, uh, being the cheapest job to master and having probably a very decently, very high magic stat of 24 can also work well with uh, Bart's, given the fact that he probably won't be uh, spellcasting a whole lot. Of course, with uh, any job, you uh, if mimes are good for spellcasting, um, freelancers are more, in my opinion, think in my opinion, they're going to be very good at being physical attackers, thanks to the fact they can equip virtually not only all the armor in the entire game, but they also get access to uh, most of the game's weapons to use as well. So they can equip just about anything without any restrictions, unlike most of the jobs in the entire game. So basically you can have your freelancers uh, equip any abilities uh, that suits the player's fancy. Of course, if you want them to be physical attackers, one way to consider going about your business will be to master the ninja's uh, dual wield, which in turn masters the whole job. Mystic Knight's Spellblade, which means you'll need to master the entire job as well. And then, of course, you'll want to master Ranger for the Rapid Fire. And that gives you pretty much the ability to attack enemies up to eight times with half of the attack strength. And, of course, with Spellblade, you'll have the ability to um, enchant your weapons with magic and be able to do a little bit more damage or exploit elemental weaknesses on enemy targets. Now, one thing to keep in mind about a Freelancer, though, is that they also inherit any auto-initiated abilities. Of course, this doesn't apply to all of them, of course, but uh, some of them include the Knight's Cover, Monk's uh, Counter, Samurai Shidori, Ninja's Dual Wield. Just to name a few. But there's plenty of other abilities. Oh yeah, also the chemist, chemist's uh, pharmaceutical ability. There's a lot of auto-initiative abilities. Uh, of course, not all of them will be applied to your freelance or mine once you uh, master any of the jobs. Of course, it does take a long time to master all the jobs. Of course, one thing you can do is uh, wait until air dimensional uh, rift and when you get to the final parts where you're going to access layer, you can take a full advantage of the monsters as they drop only AVP instead of experience, and you can basically just level up your party members' uh, jobs pretty easily. Now, of course, the Freelancer doesn't uh, become completely mastered unless it masters all the jobs in the entire game. But overall, the Freelancer is actually one of the two better jobs along with the mine to use for the final game. And technically, your ultimate goal is to uh, get whatever jobs your party members will want to have, and apply that to your freelancer, pretty much. That's the whole goal of freelancers. So in the end, freelancers become arguably one of the most powerful jobs in the entire game. And it's really up to the player to decide whether or not they want to go out grinding or just um, don't bother and let it become a weak class. <laughs> but technically, freelancers are very great thanks to the initial abilities they get access to. So in other words, having a, one person be a freelancer with all those abilities will always help the mountain help the party out in more situations than not. <laughs> so anyway that covers the freelancer guide and this also concludes the uh, Final Fantasy V uh, jobs guide for beginners. Hopefully this will help uh, players get into Final Fantasy V more. And of course uh, don't forget that um, the Pixel Remaster versions are available. Uh, you should definitely take full advantage of them while they're out and about. Because we don't know how many years it will be before these games do return once again. But anyway, if you do enjoy uh, me doing um, guides or anything in particular, free, free, feel free to hit a follow or sub. And you can also uh, follow or sub my channel on uh, YouTube as well. Because that will help me grow bit by bit. And anyway, that's going to be it for today. Or at least in terms of um, doing guides. Now, I did initially uh, put it in for another playthrough of uh, Forge Alpha so we're going to do that early because next week it's going to be the first week of August. We're going to get that out of the way before our um, 10th anniversary for uh, Twitch begins. 
And um, believe it or not, I haven't uh, submitted it in for another job, Fiesta Run. Our job, starting job, once we get the Crystal Shards, is going to be the White Mage. Believe it or not, my first job, Fiesta, actually required me to do a White Mage first. It is not a very easy job to get through along with the Thief. But at the same time, once you start getting the other jobs, your survivability improves. So in other words, this is going to help us out in the long haul. So anyway, I'm going to take a uh, few seconds to, to catch my breath, and then we're going to play a little bit of uh, Final Fantasy V and try to get the water crystal shards. <laughs> because uh, we won't be doing streaming during the weekend, aside from the Joe Max speedruns tomorrow. Uh, I'll be off from streaming up until uh, Monday when I get back home from work. So uh, let me catch my breath, uh, get a little bit of time, and then we'll um, get started with... Um, Get started with our third uh, four-job fiesta. Bro. So, see you all in a bit. 